that the contractor can't use. So they bring it here and we will use it to build other things like sidewalks or driveways. We recycle their waste. And needed the four wheel drive for that one. Thanks for visiting the Louisville Mega Cavern. You guys can exit up here in the pavilion. We'll pull right up. Now we're just getting started. Uh, we're far from through today, you guys. Go ahead, you guys. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We yield to pedestrians at the Mega Cavern. You guys, this area we're in right now is called an open pit mine. You might better know it as a rock quarry. Before they ever mined out under the ground, they mined this area right here. But Ralph Rogers, who was the visionary behind this place, he knew that Louisville was a blossoming metropolitan city. So if he wanted more rock, he was gonna have to go underground to get it. Pillar number one is now coming up on the left-hand side. This is the main roadway, entrance one into the cavern. And in the history of the cavern, there's only been one death on record, and that did happen here at Entrance 1. On a cold winter day, icicles formed above this entrance, and one broke loose and impaled a miner. It's a tragic story, but we've moved on. Just to your right is the office of the manager, who controls the storage of everything in this cavern. Don't let that slacker fool you. It's not him. <laughs> But we do store anything and everything down here. New cars, classic cars, boats, RVs, campers, trailers, jet skis, motorcycles, almost anything that you can think of. It might be stored right here underneath the city of Louisville. And it looks like we have a few more trailers to add on. Welcome aboard. I do regret to inform you that you will not be learning about the wonders of road salt. <laughs> Other than that, we haven't really missed... You haven't missed much, okay? The mine was founded by Ralph Rogers from Bloomington, Indiana back in the early 30s. Mr. Rogers had heard that the government was going to put us back to work after the Great Depression by getting us to build better roads in our country, putting money back into the pockets of the American people. This was all part of the WPA program, started to pull us out of the Depression. Mr. Rogers was a great visionary that saw the greater needs for the roads in the southern part of our country. So he pointed his men towards Tennessee. When they got into Louisville, Kentucky, they opened several rock quarries, and this was one of them. This one was closed in the early 70s, but the other rock quarries are still open today. If you look at the white painted rock walls, and then look at the flat walls created in between them, what we have done here is to create usable storage space in between the pillars that hold up the ceiling to the cavern. Each of these rooms has a big dehumidifier that will remove the humidity in the rooms. We do not heat or air condition the rooms. Mother Nature takes care of controlling the temperatures in our cavern. We will average about 58 degrees all year round, no matter what the temperature is outside. The walls are all painted white in order to help us light up the area. White walls reflect the light better, letting us use less lighting to illuminate the underground. And if you look to the left, you're going to see a large limestone wall. Nothing too peculiar about that. We've got a lot of limestone down here. Uh, we have put some arrows on this particular wall, though, to point out a few things. Each arrow up on this wall is pointing to a different fine line in the rock. And each fine line in the rock is actually where a different ancient ocean came and went, creating a different layer of strata rock. Okay, so what is strata, how strata form? Basically, a long, long time ago, there are actually oceans right here in this area. And I know that's kind of hard to believe now, but it is true. Oceans were here, and those oceans left behind lots of deposits of mud, dirt, sand, and silt. And over time, all that material mixed together and hardened up, leaving behind all the limestone that is in the Louisville area today. If you all look above your heads right now, you are actually looking at the bottom of an ancient ocean floor. That is a four-foot layer of strata above you, and we have found seashell fossils all over our cavern ceiling. There is 26 feet of limestone in total 
total above your head, and then there's an additional 50 feet of dirt. So we are already 76 feet below the ground. This is the safest place that you could possibly be during a tornado, an earthquake, or a flood. Uh, we'll start with a tornado. If there was an F5 tornado going on outside the cavern right now, we would actually be fine right where we are. We just entered entrance one. We're really not even very deep into the cavern. If you were in the back of the cavern, uh, you would actually have no idea that that tornado was going on at all. Uh, 76 feet of material is a good buffer, even during the strongest tornado, especially when you're a couple miles back in. Even during an earthquake, this is a safe spot to be. These horizontal layers of strata, uh, they will actually rub up against each other during an earthquake and dampen the effects. About four years ago here in town, we did have an earthquake, and people were calling us at the mega cavern, asking us if we were okay, wondering if the ceiling had collapsed collapsed above our heads and if we had all died. But actually, we didn't feel it down here at all. We had no idea that an earthquake had taken place. And lastly, even during a flood, uh, this is a safer spot to be than most. The cavern has only flooded one time in its entire history, and that was way back in 1937. Man, we already lost one. That's no good. Is she okay? What's that? Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, uh, the cavern has only flooded one time in its entire history. That was way back in 1937 during the famous 1937 flood in Louisville. If you're not local to the area, you might not know about that flood, but it went well above 18 feet above flood stage. Anyway, uh, limestone also plays a key part in two of Kentucky's iconic industries. These should be the first two industries uh, that you would think of when you think of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Does anybody on the tour have any idea what industries I'm talking about right now? Yes, sir. Horse racing is one. Very nice. And the other? Bourbon. You got it. 90% of all bourbons are distilled within 90 to 100 miles of where we are right now. We have brands like Jim Beam, Woodford Reserve, Maker's Mark, uh, Kentucky Tavern, Kentucky Gentleman, Bullet Bourbon, Heaven Hill, Evan Williams, Early Times, Wild Turkey, Four Roses, Buffalo Trace, Pappy Van Winkle, Very Old Barton, Old Forester, Knob Creek, Elijah Craig, Old Crow. There's a lot of bourbon made here, is my point. Bourbon distillers call the water that comes out of limestone hard water. And they say that hard water makes their bourbons taste a whole lot better. That's why they're all right here in Kentucky. A Kentucky bourbon is technically not even a bourbon at all unless it is made with limestone filtered water. That's one of the key ingredients along with a 50% corn mash and aged in a white oak barrel. And the other bourbons that are actually made outside of Kentucky, we don't talk about those bourbons. And horse owners and breeders set up shop all over Kentucky. It's not just because we have uh, pasture. We are on a bed of limestone. All the minerals get into the water. Uh, also, uh, they get into the soil, which in turn gets into the grass. Uh, horses are eat eating that grass, drinking that water. It's like taking a multivitamin every single day. We had Chip Woolley, who is the trainer of Mind That Bird who was a Kentucky Derby winner, if you don't know that. Uh, he came in here, he said you can take a blood sample from any horse in the United States and determine where it was raised based on the mineral content in that blood sample. And predictably enough, uh, Kentucky horses by far have the highest mineral content in their blood samples. So that is why we are the thoroughbred capital of the world right here in the state of Kentucky. Do you guys have any questions though, before we move along about the industries or anything like that? Any questions? Any questions? All right, guys. I'm pretty thorough. We already lost two. That's a bad start. We can't lose anymore, okay? This is the point of no return. start to look a lot more cave-like from this point forward. Every cave or cavern you go into is going to have a problem with water. We are no exception. Water from the surface moving down through the rock or from underground spring water. We control that water supply non-stop 24-7 in our cavern. To your left is what we call the water wall. The water moves through the rock pulling the minerals out of the rock and it creates what they call flow stones. These flow stones you are looking at on this wall are made up of calcium carbonate, aragonite, gypsum, and other minerals left behind from the oceans that created the rock in this area. 
Now in other caves or caverns, these flowstones end up creating stalactites or stalagmites. But they are generally something that takes over a hundred years to even grow one inch. This cavern is just not old enough to have a lot of that activity. We can show you a stalactite later on, near the end of your tour, that is growing very fast in our cavern. Sometimes they can grow a lot faster.